Hello, my reading friends, it's Ani. Are you ready for three Penelope Rex books in one video? Well, here they are just for all of you Penelope Rex fans. I hope you enjoy them. We Don't Eat Our Classmates by Ryan T. Higgins Penelope Rex was nervous. It's not every day a little T-Rex starts school. What are my classmates going to be like? Will they be nice? How many teeth will they have? This was very important. Penelope's mom bought her a new backpack with ponies on it. Ponies were Penelope's favorite because ponies are delicious. Penelope's dad packed her a lunch of 300 tuna sandwiches and one apple juice. Finally, the big day came. And Penelope Rex was very surprised to find out that all of her classmates were... Children! So she ate them, because children are delicious. Penelope Rex, said Mrs. Noodleman. We don't eat our classmates. Please spit them out at once. So she did. It was not the best way to start school. Still, Penelope was determined to have a good first day. She tried hard to make friends at recess. She finger-painted some of her best work. She even saved Griffin Emery a seat at lunch. You can sit here. Penelope started to notice everyone was making friends but her. It was lonely. When she got home, her dad asked her about her first day of school. I didn't make any friends, Penelope cried. None of the children wanted to play with me. Penelope Rex, her father asked, did you eat your classmates? Well, maybe sort of just a little bit. Sometimes it's hard to make friends, said her dad, especially if you eat them. You see, Penelope, children are just the same as us on the inside, just tastier. That gave Penelope a lot to think about. The next day, Penelope tried really hard. But poor Penelope, she could not stop herself from eating her classmates. Mrs. Noodleman! Penelope ate William Amato again! And they were all afraid of her. <coughs> Except Walter. Walter was a goldfish. So Penelope tried to make friends with him. Will you be my friend? Chomp! <laughs> cried Penelope. He's eating my finger! Once Penelope found out what it was like to be someone's snack, she lost her appetite for children. She stopped eating her classmates, even when Cece Woodman spilled barbecue sauce all over herself. And soon Penelope made friends. Found you! Want a brownie? I helped make them! Now, even when children look especially delicious, she peeks at Walter and remembers what it's like when someone tries to eat you. And Walter the goldfish stares right back at her and licks his lips. <gasps> because dinosaurs are delicious. We Will Rock Our Classmates by Ryan T. Higgins 
Penelope was the only T-Rex in her school. Sometimes that made her stand out a little. And sometimes Penelope's classmates didn't see her at all. They just saw a dinosaur. Want to play cops and dinosaurs? You can be the dinosaur! Well, I was hoping to play dentist. Great! We'll be the dentist! You be the dinosaur! Have you been flossing? Well, Yamamoto's backpack is stuck in your teeth! Dinosaur or not, Penelope loved to play. She loved to read. Good night, Tasty Moose, all wrapped in bologna. Good night, Tasty Goose, with a side dish of pony. And she loved to draw. Wait! I won't eat you! I don't even have any mustard! But the one thing Penelope loved to do more than anything else was to make music. She loved to sing. I love to rock and roll! She loved to play guitar. <laughs> Penelope loved to rock and roll. So when Mrs. Noodleman told the class about the school talent show, Penelope was excited. She was also nervous. She wanted to rock her classmates. But could she do it? Also, the sign-up sheet was right next to Walter the ferocious goldfish. Penelope took a deep breath. She had to do it. She tiptoed past Walter. Then she quickly wrote her name with her bravest purple marker. After school, Penelope shared the big news with her parents. And I'm going to wear a pink tutu and big boots and spike my scales and look angry. But I'll actually be really happy. And oh, it's going to be so great. She hummed her favorite songs while brushing her teeth. <laughs> she danced all the way to the bus. She even told her classmates about her favorite band, the Weevils. Best band ever! My dad used to go to all their concerts until he accidentally ate the drummer. At last it was time for the rehearsal. Can dinosaurs even play guitar? On stage, Penelope froze. She could not sing. She could not play guitar. She worried that dinosaurs could not rock and roll. Penelope was very quiet on the car ride home. She hardly ate anything for supper. Are you sure you don't want more penny pie? You've only had 52 burgers. The next day at recess, Penelope sat alone on the bench. She would not play hopscotch. I am a T-Rex, not a hopscotcher. She would not play duck, duck, goose. I am not a duck or another duck or a goose. I am a dinosaur! At the end of the day, Penelope crossed her name off the sign-up sheet with her saddest blue marker. When Penelope got home, she went straight to her room. Daddy Rex came in to talk to her. Is everything okay? he asked. I can't be in the talent show! she cried. I am just a dinosaur! Ah, I see, said Daddy Rex. Come with me. Take a look at this family photo album. This is your Uncle Frank. He was a figure skater. Oh, and here's your mom finishing her first marathon. And here's me. The world hamburger eating champion. I ate 5,053 hamburgers with ketchup. You see, said Daddy Rex, 
Being a T-Rex is only part of who you are. You, for instance, are kind and caring, creative and adventurous. And you can be anything you want to be. The next day at school, Penelope marched back over to the sign-up sheet. She looked straight at Walter and almost lost her nerve. But Penelope's classmates had a different idea. Can we play with you? In your band? Please, Penelope? And that gave her just enough courage. On the night of the show, Penelope was really excited and also really nervous. She peeked out from backstage to try and find her parents. When the curtains opened, William Emoto and his amazing animal sounds took the stage. Chirp! Roar! Tweet, tweet! Honk! Howl! Baroo! Plop! Mabel Hastings and her dancing pony went second. Then there was the Stegman Brothers Synchronized Swimming Mimes Act. Followed by Martina Cortez and her dazzling card tricks. Your card was the Ten of Hearts. No? Was it the Elephant of Spades? Finally, it was Penelope's turn. The lights on the stage were bright, but not as bright as Penelope. We are Penelope and the Mustard Seeds! Penelope was a T-Rex. She was also kind and caring and creative and adventurous. Most of all, Penelope Rex was a rock star. <music> Penelope and the Mustard Seeds came in second place, just behind Mabel Hastings and her dancing pony. That was okay with Penelope. She loved ponies. Mmm, ponies! We Don't Lose Our Class Goldfish by Ryan T. Higgins Penelope Rex was seven feet tall and covered in scales. Other than that, she was just like every other kid. <laughs> And just like other kids, Penelope had lots of feelings. Some things made her feel sad. Some things made her feel happy. And some things made her feel afraid. For example, she was afraid of what might happen to her mother's back if she stepped on a crack. She was afraid William Amoto might be right about dinosaurs being extinct. But Penelope's biggest fear of all was... Walter. Walter never blinked. Walter never talked. Probably because he was a goldfish. And one time, he bit Penelope's finger. <gasps> no matter which classroom supply Penelope needed, it always seemed to be right next to Walter's bowl. Scary things about Walter. By Penelope, menacing fins, unblinking eyes, hungry belly, bitey teeth. Then one afternoon, Mrs. Noodleman announced, We are all going to take turns bringing Walter home for the weekend. Mabel, you'll go first. Gulp. Penelope couldn't take Walter home. What if he tried to nibble her again? Or turn her into dino nuggets while she was sleeping? The weekend swam by. One by one, her classmates took Walter home. I took Walter to Jurassic Burgers. Walter and I played hide and seek. I tried to pet Walter. When the big day arrived, Penelope couldn't pay attention in school. She spilled her juice, she accidentally chewed her pencil, and her notebook, and her desk. All she could think about was Walter.
When the school day ended, there was no escaping her weekend with Walter. Penelope tried to do her usual things. When that didn't work, she tried to keep Walter distracted. <laughs> distracted goldfish are less bitey. It wasn't going well. And now for tonight's feature presentation. Attack of the Killer Goldfish. Then it was time for bed. Good night, Walter. Walter? Penelope decided Walter might enjoy sleeping in the kitchen. In the morning, Penelope bravely went to feed Walter his breakfast. But all she found was... A banana lamp! <gasps> The banana lamp was broken, but at least it wasn't Walter. Wait! Walter! Walter was missing! What would her classmates say? Walter! He was her responsibility. Walter! She had to find him. Walter! She looked high. She looked low. Walter! She checked the neighbor's fish pond. There you are, Walter! But... <gasps> You're not Walter! Or you! Or you! You're not even a fish! None of you are Walter! And you're a hamster! Penelope had to face the facts. Walter was gone. Walter with his thoughtful eyes and graceful fins. His teeth that he didn't even use for biting all that often. Besides, who hasn't wanted to eat a classmate every now and then? Maybe Walter wasn't so scary. Maybe Penelope even missed him. Things about Walter by Penelope. Graceful fins, thoughtful eyes, jolly belly, bitey teeth that don't bite often. Then Penelope noticed something, something fishy. <gasps> Walter! Oh, there's my old banana lamp, said Daddy Rex. I was going to bring it to the donation center, but I see you had other plans for it. Walter said nothing. He was a goldfish. For the rest of the weekend, Penelope managed to have some fun taking care of Walter. Good morning, Walter! She was proud of herself and ready to face some of her other fears, too. Especially the one about stepping on a crack. Penelope tried it, and her mom was fine. Penelope's parents were proud, too. 
You did a great job taking care of Walter. We've decided you were responsible enough to have a pet of your own.